Warm spring days on one of the country's top bass fisheries. If you're a Mille Lacs regular, that's what you're thinking about all winter. It's uh, the nice days during the pre-spawn. Fish are moving up into the shallows in waves at this time of year. They are feeding heavily and aggressively in preparation for the upcoming spawn, which generally is going to start around Memorial Day. It gives us about a two to three week window of pre-spawn where fish are big and fish are aggressive and the fishing is typically fast. So, like I was saying, if you're a Mille Lacs regular, the pre-spawn out here is typically what you're thinking about all winter. Now there's multiple ways to catch pre-spawn bass on Mille Lacs. Uh, net rigs work great, swim baits work well, tubes, there's, there's a variety of different ways to catch them. But uh, one, one technique when, when it gets warm out really outshines everything else. When you have those warm spring days and the fish are coming up and they're feeding aggressively and they're moving in the shallows and you can see them, you can see big schools of them, you can see big fish down there. There's one bait that just stands out and really turns them on like none other. And that's a jerk bait. But as with anything else, spring also comes with balance. And balance in the spring comes in the form of cold fronts. And when you get a nasty cold front where you go from 70 degree temperatures one day to 50 degree temperatures the next and you see the water cool down a little bit overnight, those, those provide some tough conditions. Fish will typically move off the edges of those shallow structures and they'll become lethargic. And there's one bait that really stands out to catch those fish as well. And that's also a jerk bait. Jerk baits will entice a feeding response when the conditions are ideal and the fish are feeding aggressively. And jerk baits will also provoke a reaction strike when fish are negative and lethargic and not feeding. No other baits are as dominant or own a season like jerk baits do for smallmouth bass in the pre-spawn. So I'm gonna break down a how-to on fishing jerk baits by going through my presentation, where to locate fish, what equipment I like to use, and when to make adjustments based on the conditions. Now jerk baits aren't magic, but when fished effectively, they'll outproduce any other technique during the pre-spawn for smallmouth on Mille Lacs. Effectively fishing jerk baits takes a little bit of practice, but it really takes a lot of confidence. The best days to learn on jerk baits are on warm trending days. Warm, shallow, aggressive fish are easy to see, catch, and also learn from. Deep, lethargic, cold front fish require patience, timing, and a lot of confidence. So as the name implies, jerk baits are fished on a jerk and pause cadence. Varying the patterns of twitches and pauses can be used to suit the conditions. The most common retrieve for jerkbait fishing is just the simple old twitch twitch pause. And you cater that to water temperature. So on a warmer day, you're gonna have less intervals between twitches. You might be a little bit more aggressive. It might be a pretty aggressive twitch twitch pause, twitch twitch pause on a nice warm spring day when fish are shallow and aggressive. On a colder post frontal day, it might be much more tamed down. The twitches might be very light taps of the rod followed by long pauses in between. Pauses that can range anywhere from three to five seconds all the way up to 15 seconds plus. Water temp is one of the most critical factors in pre-spawn bass fishing, but it's also one of the most misunderstood. A common misconception among anglers about water temperature is the importance of a static temperature itself. A lot of people may say 55 or 57 degrees is the prime temperature for fishing jerk baits or whatever bait it may be. But in the pre-spawn, the static temperature isn't so important in itself. It's actually the trend. That's what's making the difference in the pre-spawn. You need to know whether your water is warming or cooling and at what rate it's warming or cooling. Fishing activity in the pre-spawn can all but be predicted simply by looking at a weather forecast. Looking at what the temperature was doing the day prior and what it's supposed to do the day you're going can tell you a lot about what the feeding activity is going to be like on the fish. It can tell you their feeding activity, it can give you a good idea of their location and where they're going to go or where they've been. 
So just understanding what the temperature was doing before and what it's going to do coming up when you go fishing is arguably the most important thing you can do before you hit the water. These warming and cooling trends dictate what I'm going to do on a daily basis during the pre-spawn. I will be going one direction and doing one thing on a warming trend. I will be doing the complete opposite and going another direction on a cooling trend. Warming trends, I'm typically going to be fishing heavier equipment. I'm going to be fishing much more aggressive and I'm going to be fishing up shallow. Cooling trends, I'm going to be fishing lighter equipment. I'm going to be fishing off the edge of the break. I'm not necessarily going to go all the way back to the wintering grounds out in the deep water and the basin where the bass were hanging out all winter. I'm just going to fall off the edge of the structure. And this is where I'm going to get into the detail on the two different directions I go with jerk baits during the pre-spawn based on warming trends or cooling trends. So on warm days, typically what I like to use is a six foot eight medium extra fast action rod with 20 pound braid and a six foot length of 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. This seems a bit excessive for jerk baits for a lot of people. But when I'm fishing on warmer days, I'm going up shallow. I'm oftentimes around weeds, reeds, rocks, docks, other obstructions. There's usually a lot of zebra mussels that I encounter. You also run into toothy critters like pike and muskies. So I want something a little bit beefier. And that applies to the bait too. The bait that I'm using at that time is almost always the same. My favorite is just a white number 10 X wrap. It just gets the job done day in, day out when the fish are up in the shallows. It just works. And the some of the reasons I like it are is it's an aggressive bait. It really twitches well. It jumps all over the place. It's easy to fish. It runs shallow. It's great for working in the shallow water. And when the fish are aggressive, they just hammer it like the, more so than they hammer anything else. It's just a fantastic bait. For warm water fish. What I also like about that bait is it can handle the burlier hooks it comes with. It comes with some pretty meaty piped out hooks on it and when you're fishing in the shallows sometimes around docks or reeds or larger rocks where you don't want them getting in behind some structure and breaking you off you have a little more leeway to horse that fish a little bit and pull them away from the cover. Many of the best structures during pre-spawn are some of the best structures throughout the season. Large boulders are great during the pre-spawn. Uh, heavy rock spines and drop-offs with big heavy rocks on it. Those are all great areas during the pre-spawn. A lot of times I find fish on that stuff in 6 to 12 feet of water, sometimes all the way to 18 feet of water, kind of depending how late the ice went off. On a later ice out, sometimes I'll find the fish actually a little bit deeper. But there's two noticeable differences during the pre-spawn that really stand out. And the one is going to be rock to sand transitions. Those can always be good, but during the pre-spawn, those are excellent spots to look. You can find those around the perimeter of the lake. A lot of times you'll find them between the shoreline and the rocks themselves. Another way to find the rock to sand um, transition is to use your electronics. And after a windy day, which you get plenty of in the spring, you simply go around with your side imaging and you look for ripples on the bottom. Mud doesn't ripple, gravel doesn't ripple, muck isn't gonna ripple. Rocks obviously are immovable down there to the wind and waves, but the sand will ripple, especially after a hard wind. That current, that wind generated current will blow around, it'll ripple up the sand, and it makes it very easy to find those rock to sand transitions that might be in a little bit deeper water or might be in a little bit stained water. The second notable difference in structures that work well during the pre-spawn is just shallow water. And that's not exclusive to pre-spawn. You'll find that bite going throughout the season, especially late summer, you get a shallow water bite out here again too. But during the pre-spawn, it just really shines in the shallow water on hot, warm days. Bass are, um, you know, they're dark on top, they're light on bottom like a lot of fish, like a lot of animals in general. But they've done studies on bass that have found that the bass's core body temperature on a sunny day 
can actually be 10 degrees warmer than the surrounding water simply because they have a dark back and that light bottom. They're meant to absorb the sun's rays and they warm up throughout the day. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a day where it just feels a lot warmer outside. Just simply having good sunlight a lot of times can get things moving up in the shallows. When I'm fishing warm water trends, I'm fishing pretty aggressively. I'm not doing long pauses in between twitches, maybe a second, maybe two seconds at the most. But usually I'm moving pretty quick, I'm pretty aggressive on the twitches, I'm trying to make that bait move a lot. And a lot of times what you'll find when you're fishing aggressively like that, in the shallows, in the warm water, is it won't be one or two fish coming up behind your bait, it'll be an entire school of fish following your bait back to the boat. This is the time where people tend to catch two fish at a time on one bait. That's, that's when you're up in the shallows fishing aggressively for warm water, aggressive fish. That's as good as it gets when it comes to pre-spawn, smallmouth fishing, and if you ask me, it might just be as good as it gets. Cold fronts are the bugger during the pre-spawn, and you're gonna get them. It's every few days one is gonna move through. Some are stronger than others. Um, they're definitely gonna slow the fishing down. Fish become lethargic. They typically move off of the structure. They're not necessarily gonna move all the way back out to their wintering haunts. Like, they don't go that far. They're just gonna drop off the edge of the structure, and sometimes they'll sit right at that edge. Sometimes they may kind of go out and lounge around on a flat nearby but they'll be in deeper water and they're gonna to be tougher to catch. When fishing the backside of a cold front, oftentimes the best thing to do is if you have a reference point where you knew where the fish were the day prior to the cold front, is to go back to that area and fish the heaviest structure you can find in that area. So if it's large boulders, you go to the big boulders. If there's a good drop off right next to it, you go to the drop off and you try to find the largest rock, the heaviest break, Whatever the largest structures are, the most prominent features in that area, that's typically how you're going to find fish when the bite gets real tough during a fickle pre-spawn cold front. My setup at, during a cold front is going to be completely different than my warm trend setup. And what I use during a cold front is going to be much lighter line, a lighter rod, kind of a lighter, more of a finesse jerk bait, if you will. So during a cold front, what I like to use is a seven foot medium light fast action rod and this rod's going to feel a lot whippier it's just not as burly as using that six eight medium extra fast you can really go subtle on your twitches when you're using this rod it just works really well for running a little bit lighter baits that aren't as aggressive i'm using 10 pound braided line to a six foot length of eight or ten pound fluorocarbon leader I really like going to an eight pound leader, but sometimes if you're around large boulders where you might come in contact with those boulders, you find that the eight simply gets chewed up too quickly by the zebra mussels. My bait of choice is going to vary a little bit more at this point. I typically go with a little bit higher end bait. I'll buy a Japanese jerk bait of some sort. They typically just come with better components. They tend to suspend a little bit better or just hold a little more horizontal in the rot water. The Japanese jerk baits just seem to do better when the conditions are colder. When picking up one of those baits, I'm typically grabbing something that comes in three hooks. Oftentimes that's going to be like a 110 size in the Japanese baits. And the reason I go with three hooks is because a lot of these fish nip and run when they're being lethargic like that. They'll slowly come up to your bait and they'll just creep up to it on the pause. And then the next twitch you do, or maybe just before you get to the next twitch, that bass will just nip on one hook on the bait and then take off. So a lot of times with these jerk baits, fishing colder water and a more lethargic bite, you find that you're only catching a bass by one hook right in the corner of the mouth. So oftentimes it's best to be using those three hook baits because when the fish turns or if one of those hooks comes unbuttoned, sometimes one of the other hooks will actually grab that fish and kind of save the day for you. So going with a three hook jerk bait, when you go with your cold water jerk baits, I find uh, just to be 
much more worth it in the cold water because a lot of times you're going for fewer bites. You want to make sure you're capitalizing on them. In the warmer water, that x wraps only a two hook jerk bait, but oftentimes the fishing's so fast that even if you lose a fish or two, it doesn't matter. There's one right behind it to grab it anyway. I already talked about my favorite color and the little number 10 x wrap for going for shallow, aggressive fish. When I'm doing that, that's about the only color that I use. I just grab that or whatever similar to it. It doesn't really matter. But when I go out deep, I start varying things a little bit. I feel like the fish can get a little bit more picky. Typically, the baits that I pick when I'm fishing deeper, especially after a cold front, I'm going to pick something that's either chrome, something with a white base to it, or something that's translucent. I like chrome on sunny or windy days like we have today. I like the white all around. I kind of like that on all different days. That's just one of my go-to colors. And then the translucent color, that's a good color for when things get very slick, calm. And I don't necessarily know how big of a difference color makes on the jerk baits. But in my head, it makes a little bit of a difference, and those are typically the three directions I go. I don't have a specific color I'm really in love with. It's just something along those hues. A couple other things, the features on the baits that I like, is if it has some like blue iridescence to it, that mimics a lot of what you see on the bait fish in this lake, be it perch or shiners. Both of them have like this blue iridescent undertone to them, so it's a very natural color. The second thing that I like is hints of orange. Like on the x wrap it has a little orange chin. Uh, on some of the other baits, you'll see a dot of orange on the belly. I like those. That, that little orange to me seems like it's a little target. Orange is a color, orange is a color of aggression, so maybe it's all in my head. Maybe it actually works a little bit. I don't know, but it's something that I like. When I'm fishing colder water, when I'm fishing cold fronts, and the fish have left the shallows, when things have cooled down, and it's just a, a chilling spell going on, the fish will move off the structure, they become more lethargic, and then you gotta work a lot harder to pick things apart. This is where confidence really plays a large role. A lot of times in the past, you know, you were kinda, you had to trust that there were fish in the area. Now we have electronics such as side imaging, which will give you a pretty good idea if there's fish in the area. Um, when you were fishing in the past, a lot of times, you also, it took you a very long time to find the correct cadence to get those fish to bite. A lot of times you'll notice, especially when you're fishing in the shallows on a warm trend, you can watch the fish come up and turn around and come up and turn around. They're very indecisive on whether they want to hit the bait or not. So you can either speed up or slow down and you can see right then what, what works. And then you can just kind of mimic that cadence the rest of the day. In colder water, you don't get that visual. You don't get that good reference that you do in warmer water. So you, you have to like try this cadence for a while, give it a few casts, and then maybe change it up a little bit. And you're making these subtle changes trying to dial it in and find what's working that particular day. But now with some of the latest electronics that are out, such as live sonar or the forward facing sonar, whatever you wanna call it, you can actually watch in deeper water in real time how that fish is reacting to your bait. You can, it's, it's not quite as good as simply being able to watch them in shallow, clear water, but it gives you a very good idea. You can see the fish come up to your bait and turn around. You can try to twitch it a little more aggressively and see if that attracts them more or attracts more fish from the school, or you can try to slow it down to see if that prolonged pause actually gets the fish to totally commit to the bait. You can learn a lot on the new live sonar and it's making the deeper water jerkbait fishing much easier to do. When fishing the colder, clearer water post front, Typically what I'm doing is I'm starting off with a pause that's in that two to three second range between twitches. The twitches aren't gonna be as aggressive. It might be light taps on the rod, especially when I know my bait's right by good structure. It might just be a tap tap and then a two or three second pause and then a tap tap and a two or three second pause. Trying to just create hang time holding that bait right in that area, whether it be on a rocky spine or whether it just be off the edge of a structure. On very, very cold conditions with very negative fish, oftentimes right around ice out, you'll hear about guys really prolonging the pause, ex extending them way out. Um, I've done it before where it's been 15 to 20 second pauses. We've done it in the past and caught fish with longer pauses. I've heard of people doing minute long pauses where they literally 
do a couple jerks, bring their bait down to depth, and just let it sit, set the rod down, and don't pick it up for a minute. Um, those are excruciating pauses. That, that makes for a long day, especially if you're not sure that's what's working yet. So what I would do is start a little bit quicker and then start going longer and longer on the pauses until you find the sweet spot where you start actually catching fish. Now there are a few notable variables that I saved to the end to try not to create confusion. And the first of those is going to be fish that you find off of structure. Most cases this is going to be post frontal. A lot of times, um, especially if you were catching fish up shallow prior to the front, you'll go off the deep edge around that structure that you were fishing prior and you'll find schools of fish out in that deeper water just lounging around. Oftentimes it'll be the deepest water near where you were catching them before. When I find those fish, it's a trap. It's a straight trap. <laughs> it, it's probably going to be the fish that you're looking for. If, you know, when you're fishing smallies, you're typically going to be finding smallies. Generally, it's not like it's, it's walleyes tricking you. It'll be smallmouth out there, but it's very hard to get anything worthwhile out of the school. Oftentimes what I find is when I go to those fish, when I see them on my side imaging, when I pull up to the, the reef or I pull up to that shallow structure, and I see that big school of 30, 40, 60 fish sitting there, it always sucks me in. You always see that and you wanna go fish it, you throw on a deeper diving jerk bait, you pull out whatever other baits you wanna to try to get those fish to go. And a lot of times what you find is you whack one right off the bat. In the first or second or third cast you catch one and they hold you there for way too much time and you don't catch another fish out of that school. Don't fall for that trap. When you see them in a school like that, off in the middle of nowhere, off of the structure, just lounging around out there, those fish are just very difficult to catch. But what I do do is I go to the nearest structure to those fish. And oftentimes what you'll see is um, a hard edge or a spine with boulders on it. You'll find some significant structure near that school of fish. Whatever that nearest structure is, I'm gonna go right there. And what happens is when you go by those fish on your side imaging, you may see 60 fish on the school and you may see six fish on the structure. It doesn't matter. The 60 fish in that school are tough to catch. The six fish on that structure are most likely actively feeding. I would much rather target the six fish that are on the structure than go after the 60 that are off of it. And that holds true throughout a lot of the summer. I have four more. The second one is leader length. Oftentimes six foot is plenty on my fluorocarbon leader. That's what I use 90% of the time. I generally don't have much of an issue with it. There is one instance though where it can make a difference and that's when you see that your line is slapping the surface of the water. It's usually when there's some sort of a light breeze but it's there's no chop on the water. There will be a bow in your line from the braided line floating on top. Your line will bow a little bit and it'll go back to where your jerk bait is where the line meets the water and then as you're jerking it'll slap the water. I've seen that on more than one occasion. That will spook the bass. And when that happens, what I'll do is whether I'm fishing deeper water or I'm fishing in the shallows, I'll bump up my leader length. So instead of going from a six foot length of leader material, I'm gonna put about 30 feet of leader material and really get a lot of that fluorocarbon out there because fluorocarbon sinks and the braid floats. So the braid stays on top, the wind catches it. When you go with fluorocarbon, the fluorocarbon's gonna sink under the surface and it's gonna reduce the slapping overall, but the slapping that does happen with the line on the water is gonna be a long ways from the bait at that point. The third variable is heavy winds and jerk baits work really well in heavy winds as well but they can be a little bit trickier and it comes back to the line again. Heavy winds will put a big bow in your line, they grab the line and they want to push your bait across the water. It makes pausing the jerk bait very difficult. Just simply casting and reeling it, it's not going to affect it much but it's the pauses. The wind wants to grab the line and push the jerk bait really quickly. So instead of fishing like perpendicular to the wind, 
on very windy conditions, what I'll actually do is I'll point the nose of the boat right into the wind and sometimes I'll just fish off the back of the boat with the wind. I'll set the boat up on the structure so I can fish straight off the back of the boat and retrieve the bait straight back into the wind. That'll eliminate the bow on the line, that'll make fishing the jerk bait and the pauses a lot easier. The fourth thing is spinning equipment. A lot of people like bait casters, I understand why you have great accuracy with them. But oftentimes on Mille Lacs, accuracy isn't really necessary. You want long casts. Spinning reels are gonna give you much longer casts, especially when you're in the wind. When you're trying to cast into the wind with a spinning reel, you can just huck it out there and it's gonna go. With a bait caster, it, you're gonna run into tangles at times and it's, it's just not necessary to use a bait caster. I've had them both. I've had some of the best bait casting setups you can get for fishing jerk baits and I'd rather fish a cheap spinning combo. In the last variable, which is oftentimes the trickiest, is stagnant weather. And that's not real common in the pre-spawn and spring. Minnesota is known for its huge fluctuations and high temps followed by low temps, sunburn one day and winter park is the next. So stagnant temperatures are not something you deal with a lot of. It's usually just a day or two out of the season. But when I see stagnant temperatures with no real clear trend in either direction, warming or cooling, that makes things a little bit trickier. You kind of wonder, do I go up shallow or do I fish deeper? I typically tend to fish a little bit off the edge when things get stagnant. I, I, I don't find the shallows to be as good. They may still have fish in them, but things tend to scatter out and finding a, a true pattern to any cadence that can be a little more difficult too on those days. So stagnant weather can be a little trickier but I don't deal with a lot of it. When I do run in to no real clear trend in stagnant weather one of my favorite things to do is pull out swim baits. Swim baits are kind of like training wheels for the pre-spawn. If you're having trouble catching fish you throw on a little four inch paddle tail swim bait and you'll start catching fish and a lot of times it'll at least clue you into the right direction. So I'll post a video on those as well. But when you get stagnant weather, you're just gonna have to do a little experimenting and uh, try to figure it out. So three things to keep in mind every time you go out jerkbait fishing. Watch the weather. Watch the weather before you go out and watch the weather the day you're going out. You need to know where it was and where it's going in order to establish what the trend is. So check the weather the day before you're set to go and also know what the weather is the day you're supposed to go out. Adjust the speed that you're fishing to the trend. If you're on a cooling trend you need to slow things down. You're going to need to figure out how long a pause you need to go with. When you're on a warming trend you can typically fish pretty aggressively. When you see fish up in that two to three foot of water in the shallows you can start trucking along pretty quick at that time and you'll figure it out pretty quickly when you can see the fish and how they're reacting to your bait exactly what you need to do. The third thing is look for the active fish and they're going to be on or near structure. So don't get sucked into that trap of seeing fish on your side imaging or seeing fish on your forward facing sonar out off of the structure. Don't let those guys pull you in because they're giant time wasters for the most part. Like I said, you might catch a fish right off the bat, but I would much rather fish three fish on the structure than 30 fish off of it. So hopefully these tips help you out and get you pointed in the right direction for the pre-spawn bite out on Mille Lacs Lake. A lot of what I went over will translate to many other lakes throughout the country and especially in the Midwest. If you're looking to get out on a guided fishing trip with me, you can always call me or text me or send me an email. It's Ryan Kelly, Laguna Guide Service. And I wish you happy fishing and good luck next time you get out.